Hi, it's Jo from Minerva and today we're going to be working with some lace and we're going to make the Montrose top from Cashmere Patterns. If you've not seen or heard of Cashmere Patterns before, they are a pattern company with um, a large size range. So they go from sizes 12 to 32, but lots of their patterns have different pattern pieces for different cup sizes. So if you need a larger cup size um, and you don't always want to make a full bust adjustment or you're not sure how to do one, then these patterns are great because you can cut out different pieces to get a better bust fit. This is the Montrose top. It's a shell top. It comes in two variations. Um, depending on which fabric you choose will probably depend on which view you choose. So view A is a casual top and it has a yoke on the back with a little gather in the center. So there's a little bit of back detail and it has short sleeves. This is ideal for any fabric with drape or any lightweight fabric. So if you look for a cotton, it need to be a lawn or something light. Um, it's perfect for our Minerva exclusive Visco Chalet and there's huge range of pattern designs for choosing there but that will give a really nice drape to that gather on the back. View B has a jewel neck and slightly longer elbow length sleeves um, and it has a little button opening on the back so it's got you can have more of a sort of evening look it can be used for going out in or you can also pare that down if you chose a cotton fabric it. and also you can play around if your lace has a trim scallop or edging the pattern comes in size 0 to 16 um, you can get another size because it goes up to size 32 and you also get drafting for CD cup, EF cup and a GH cup. So um, it gives you lots of instructions on how to take your measurements. The fabric that I've chosen today is a lace because I want to give you some tips and tricks on sewing with lace. It's not always our go-to fabric when we're looking for um, uh, clothes for day to day but actually if you choose a soft lace then um, you can get a casual look with it without it looking too glamorous. This one is a Chantilly corded lace. So a corded lace has this little line running around the flower shapes like a little fine cord so it gives it a little bit of texture. It also gives it a little bit of weight so it's not too light and thin. I've chosen that one because it comes in 32 different colours and I think that's great for if you want to match it with a, a patterned item on the bottom or you just want to wear it with palazzo trousers or a full skirt or a short pencil skirt, you've got a choice there to find the colour that matches another garment. If you want something more luxurious for an evening wear item, then this is a Donna lace and this again is a cotton lace but it doesn't have um, a background in it, so you absolutely need to line this one. This is it here. and I've put my dress on the mannequin so that you can see that it's got this edging detail which you can try and work with when you're cutting out. So you can use this on the edge of the jewel sleeve or you can use it along the hem. It's really lovely this, it's such a treat. And here's the edging look and it comes with a stabiliser on it and then you trim those off and then you get a beautiful border. The Chantilly lace that I'm working with today is going to have a lining so I've chosen a soft crepe and this acts as a really good lining because it's not a noisy lining because it's going to be round your shoulders it's a really soft crepe and again this one comes in over a hundred colours so I knew that you would be able to find whatever lace colour you wanted for your outer colour and then you can really switch it up with the lining. You can put a bright lining behind a lace so you could have put something like a lime green behind there and it would really show through or you can choose something tonal. You could also make the top in just lace and wear a camisole underneath or go for a sheared look which you can also use a uh, Georgette for or any kind of chiffon. So this pattern is really, really versatile. I'm heading over to the cutting table now to cut out my lace. Um, you'll see a few little tips along the way. So I'm going to be trying to use the edging of this Chantilly lace. It's got quite a subtle edging on it. And you can see me matching up the pattern to get the best from the border.
I can't encourage you enough to um, do a little test piece before you start um, because all laces are different. Um, some have got a little bit of stretching, some have got more um, background pattern than others. So you will need to maybe make your stitch length a little bit longer. I've got a sharps needle in here, but actually the opposite is sometimes helpful. So if you put a ballpoint needle in, it won't keep snagging the thread. So there's a few things to test. I've tested my overlocker and it's not chewing it up, but when I'm putting under the overlocker, I'm I'm putting it under and starting with the needle up. I'm not just chaining it under the foot. I'm starting a little bit in so that it's got something to grip onto with the feed dogs. So now I'm going to try the sewing and set up my machine. Needle down, no back tack. It's not pulling or rippling and it is actually joining my seams together. So that's fabulous. You can French seam if you've got a very delicate fabric. So if you've got a Georgette or a chiffon or something sheer, you can French seam your top together. I'm happy with my overlock finish. So I'm going to continue with that because I've got some lining that I'm going to have behind. The first thing we're going to do is prepare some of the pieces. So once they're cut, they're quite delicate, obviously, because they're in lace. Um, and we're going to do some stay stitching. When you're stay stitching or when you're sewing any lace, it's a really good idea not to do the back tack because um, the light netting on the back of the lace or all of the little loops that connect up all your pieces of lace will get sucked down into the foot plate. So this project is going to be one where you're going to be tying off your ends so that you can keep the full length of the seam. If you tie them off too tight, you'll squidge all of your uh, fabric down. So you need to tie them all off gently but carefully so that you get the full length of your seam and you haven't had any problems with your fabric going into the sewing machine. Next, we're going to sew the darts and um, we're going to be quite careful here. So we're going to make sure that we start at the dart leg end. So start at the side seam end because you'll need to tie that off. You can't go forwards and back. And then you're going to take it very gently out to the bust point. Now, if you've got a cotton that's got thicker and thinner parts, um, you might want to just check that wherever your dart finishes doesn't make a pucker. So if you've got a thicker bit of the corded lace right at your dart apex, you might get a little knobbly bit. So you want to try and get it where the fabric is a little bit lighter so that you can grade your darts out and they become invisible. Just make sure you're putting your darts on the side of fabric that you want, so it needs to be on the wrong side. I'm pinning it so that I can start at the outside and then work my way in and I've got threads to tie at the end. From your test piece, you might want to make sure that you get the right stitch length. I find a long stitch length gathered up the lace so I've got quite a small one here, 2 to 2.5. I'm heading towards that dart point, just taking the needle off gently, and then I can tie the ends. I'm going to take out my tailor's tacks, that's the best way to mark lace. And clip the threads. You need to press your dart, so just be careful under the sewing machine. You can, if you're getting quite a dark line where your dart is, you can take some of the excess fabric out from your dart. It's up to you. You can just overlock to the end. That's what I chose to do. And it's made it really smooth. The next part of the pattern is to sew the shoulder seams. Now, it seems easy, this part. Don't rush it because this is the whole fitting of your top. So tack them together or pin them together, put the top over your head and just check your shoulder length. You don't want your shoulder seam, remembering the seam allowance, to go too far over the edge of your shoulder point. And your shoulder point is where you can feel the hinged part of your arm. So make sure it's not scooting out past there. If you um, normally need to do a sloping shoulder adjustment, now is the time to do that. If you need to do a forward or backwards shoulder adjustment, you also need to do that. You need your shoulder seam to be right on the top of your shoulder. If it's slipping back, 
you'll end up with neck problems. If it's slipping forward, you'll end up with uh, extra fabric here where you don't want it. So just take a little bit of time to try out your shoulder fit. Make sure that your fabric is right sides together because you don't want to be doing any unpicking with lace. And you need to use some pins with quite big heads. Quilters pins are quite good because they don't get lost in the lace. You can press your shoulder seams. Now we can work on these sleeves. So we're going to put some easing stitches in the head of the fabric. It's quite a good idea with the lace to use a different coloured thread so that you can pull it out afterwards. Um, and you need to make sure that you're not chewing up the fabric. So again, be really gentle at the start of your sewing and maybe get your stitch length quite long so that you can draw up the um, different thicknesses of the lace into the sleeve head. When you've drawn up the sleeve head, you can then um, match it into the arm psych and make sure you match the back notch with the back part of your top and the front notch with the front part. Front notch is one, back notch is two. I'm just drawing up the easing threads to get that nice curve at the top of the sleeve head. It does move along quite easily and again I want to make sure that I'm getting everything the right way round and I'm looking for the notches. Next I can set in the sleeve pinning as I go. Start with the edges, work towards the notches and then sew the sleeve in place. Here's the sleeve in place, it's got a lovely smooth shoulder and no puckers or ripples. Next, turn your top. You can overlock or zigzag the inside seam of your sleeve. I love this method of constructing tops where you put the sleeve in because now you've got the task of sewing along the side seam and sleeve all in one pass and it makes putting a sleeve in really, really easy. Just a little bit of care if you're using the border, make sure that you match up the border really, really accurately because you're not going to have a hem allowance there to uh, suck up any inaccuracy in your hem lengths. Again, on the sleeve there as well, I want that to be a really seamless join. And pin your side seam. I don't want to cut off my overlocks threads, so I'm drawing them through with a darning needle into the seam allowance so that I get a really smooth finish at the bottom of my hems. I'm going to give everything a final press. It's a really good idea to use a press cloth with lace and also to turn your iron down. You can do this when you do your test piece. So once you've got it to this stage, you could wear it as it is and you can bind the neckline and that's simple. You bind around the neck and down the slit at the back and you put the button on as the fastening. I would like to line mine because although this uh, Chantilly lace is nice and soft, um, I'd like something to be on my body that's even softer. So I'm going to go for the uh, soft crepe that I spoke to you about. So because this is view B, I'm going to repeat view B. So I'm going to redo the shoulders and I'm going to redo the darts on the soft crepe pieces. And then I'll show you how to put that inside the lace outer that you've made. You can hem your sleeves and top if you need to. If you've got your lace border, then you don't need to do any hemming. If you're not lining your top, then you can bind the edge as in the instructions. So there is a bias binding edge to attach to your top and fold to the inside. So now you can put together your lining.
Okay, you need to make the slit in the back for the button opening, so make sure that's the same length as your outer. And then we are ready to put the two pieces together. So have your top inside out and your lining right side out and put your pieces right sides together. First place to join is at the shoulder seams, so make sure everything's all nice and flat. Pin the shoulder seams and work your way around the neckline. Okay, when you sew, you're going to sew around the neckline, down to the bottom, and you're going to do a couple of stitches at the bottom and work your way back up to the top. Next, you're going to clip the curves so that your neckline sits really nicely and you can take out any bulk on the seam allowances. Turn your work to the right side and take a look at your neckline. Now, you might need to make a few uh, choices here. So if it's sitting really nicely, that's great. If it's really bulky, you might want to uh, layer some out or you can try a pick stitch and that makes little tiny stitches on the wrong side. But whatever you choose, it needs to have a smooth neckline. On the back, you're going to push out the corners for the back slit. But you might be getting a little bit of puckering just here. On the inside, make two little snips with sharp scissors to release that corner and you might need to use a little bit of fray stop just to stop that lace there from fraying. So we've got the lining into the top and now we need to think about just finishing that final raw edge which is the armhole psych that goes around the sleeve. There are a couple of ways that you can do it. If you've got a nice uh, seam allowance that's not shredding or fraying or anything, mine's all overlocked, you can bring your lining to the edge of your overlocking and take it through the overlocker again. So this time you'll be adding your lining to that seam allowance. If you want a neater finish, you can press your seam allowance underneath the lining fold under and pin and you can do that all the way around and then hand stitch around your top. A warning with that is you need to make sure that say from this is the back opening so make sure to, to get that fold you're not taking too much of your back because otherwise you'll make it tight across your back so if you're not getting it so that there's enough slack in the lining, then go to the overlock method. If you've got plenty of slack in your lining because you kept all your seam allowances really good, then you can pin and hand stitch. If you do choose to overlock, there's a couple of things to watch out for. Um, don't go over your pins because they will break your blade and make sure that you're not catching any other part of the sleeve because you don't want to, at this point, at the very end, um, cut into any other part of the sleeve. So do it in really small sections. bottom where you join it on you might just need to do a little snip in the seam allowance so that you can get that flat. Okay just the finishing touches to do so hem your lining. It's good if you've got a border just to make sure that it's just above the border and you can put your choice of closure on the back so you can either have a hook and eye, so you get that nice keyhole detail, or you can hand sew on a little piece of ribbon or elastic and put a button if you've got a button to match or a beautiful statement button, a little um, something special that you've got one of to finish off your top. 
and then it's time to try it on. Okay, so here's the top finished. It actually is really, really nice with this soft crepe underneath because although this Chantilly is soft, it's fine on the arms, but it's given me really good coverage. Got a really nice neckline, quite a high neckline. View A has a lower neckline, so if you um, want to change that up, you can. This one is View B with the little opening. I've got a hook and eye on mine. I've worked with the border of the fabric and cut that on the sleeves and also on the hem. It's a tricky colour to see, I, I know. But you can see all of that corded detail. It is quite important with uh, lace that you do keep double checking the right side and the wrong side because lace is not uh, a very fun job for unpicking. So make sure that you get your right side and your wrong side correct before you start sewing. Well, I hope you have enjoyed today's sew along. It's been the Montrose Top by Cashmere Patterns. This is View B and I've used a lace fabric and I must say it's not as tricky as you think it is. You can bury a lot of things in lace as long as you do that test square at the beginning and check that you're not puckering up the fabric, um, then you can make sure that you overlock the edges. Even zigzagging on a machine would just all be hidden inside the lace texture. So I think it's a really great way to make a simple top and maybe move it up a little bit and make it something a little bit special for a girl's lunch, a night out to the pub, um, a meal with friends, a family party. It's absolutely perfect. If you've made the Montrose top, especially in a different size, because I'm always obviously sewing for my size, so it would be good if you had information on the cup sizes for the other variations in the pattern. There are the three different uh, bust sizes. Don't forget the pattern comes right up to size 32, so make sure you pick the right size pattern for the size that you need. If you've made one, we would love to see it, so do make an account with us, share your makes, um, show us your fabric choice because I think this pattern can be very versatile depending on which fabric that you choose. If you're looking to purchase a different type of fabric, something you've not had before, then maybe now is the time to become a Craft Club member where you can receive a discount on all your orders throughout the year. And just for those of you who like to comment below, um, I'm wearing the Fen Dress by Fancy Tiger Crafts and it is made in a Robert Kaufman check. It's a really large check, um, so you can see I've had to do a little bit of pattern balancing and it has a drop sleeve. Thank you very much for watching. Do call back for more tutorials, tips, hints, tricks, fabric focus. There's absolutely loads out there. We would love to see you. Bye.